Welcome to our channel. Today, we're diving into the world of science to uncover some of the most bizarre and ethically questionable experiments ever conducted. Science is about pushing boundaries and seeking knowledge, but this pursuit can sometimes lead us down dark paths. Throughout history, there have been experiments that crossed ethical lines, leaving us to grapple with their implications. Join me, Google TV, as we delve into the minds of the researchers, the experiences of the subjects, and the ethical debates around these controversial scientific endeavors. Our first stop takes us to Stanford University in 1971, a time of great social and academic experimentation. Picture this, a mock prison meticulously constructed in the basement of the psychology department, complete with cells and barred windows. Our protagonist, or perhaps antagonist, is Dr. Philip Zimbardo, a young and ambitious psychologist with a keen interest in the human psyche. His goal to study the psychological effects of power dynamics and authority on human behavior. Zimbardo recruited 24 male college students, carefully screening them for mental stability and randomly assigning them to be either guards or prisoners in this simulated environment. The guards were given uniforms, mirrored sunglasses to create a sense of anonymity, and strict instructions to maintain order at all costs. The prisoners, on the other hand, were arrested at their homes without warning, fingerprinted, stripped, deloused, and given prison garb and numbers, stripping them of their identities. Initially, participants treated it like an elaborate game, laughing and joking as they settled into their roles. But as the days wore on, the lines between reality and simulation began to blur, and the atmosphere grew increasingly tense. The guards, emboldened by their newfound authority, became increasingly authoritarian and abusive exerting their power in disturbing ways. They subjected prisoners to sleep deprivation, solitary confinement, and humiliating tasks, pushing the boundaries of the experiment. Some prisoners, unable to cope with the relentless psychological torment, broke down emotionally, pleading to be released. The experiment, originally slated to last two weeks, was abruptly halted after only six days due to the severity of the psychological harm inflicted on the participants. The Stanford Prison Experiment became a chilling testament to the power of situational factors in shaping human behavior, revealing the dark potential within us all. It showed us that even good people, when placed in a toxic environment with unchecked power, are capable of unspeakable acts, challenging our understanding of morality. It forced us to confront the uncomfortable truth that the line between good and evil is far more permeable than we'd like to believe, blurring the boundaries we thought were clear. Was the knowledge gained worth the psychological trauma inflicted on the participants? This question continues to haunt the legacy of the experiment. Could such an experiment even be conducted ethically today? The ethical considerations are more stringent, and such a study would likely face significant scrutiny. The debate rages on, fueled by the enduring legacy of the Stanford Prison Experiment, as we continue to grapple with its profound impact on our understanding of human nature. From the simulated prison cells of Stanford, we journey back to 1961 to Yale University, where psychologist Stanley Milgram designed an experiment to explore human obedience to authority. This experiment would become one of the most famous and controversial studies in the history of psychology. The world had witnessed the horrors of the Holocaust, and the question was, how could ordinary people participate in such atrocities? Were they simply following orders, or was there something deeper at play in human nature? Participants were told they were in a study about learning and memory. They believed they were contributing to important scientific research that could help improve educational methods. They were assigned the role of teacher and introduced to another participant, an actor playing the learner. The setup was designed to make the teacher believe the learner was another volunteer like themselves. The learner was strapped to a chair with electrodes, and the teacher was instructed to administer electric shocks for every wrong answer. The shocks were said to increase in intensity with each mistake. The shocks weren't real, but the teacher believed they were inflicting real pain. The setup was so convincing that many teachers showed signs of extreme stress and discomfort. As the experiment progressed, the learner would make deliberate mistakes, eliciting increasingly intense shocks. The teacher was faced with the moral dilemma of causing pain to another person. At some point, the learner would start pounding on the wall, pleading for the experiment to stop. The cries of pain and pleas for mercy were designed to test the limits of the teacher's obedience. If the teacher hesitated, the experimenter, dressed in a lab coat, 
would instruct them to continue. The authority of the lab coat was a crucial element in the experiment's design. The results were shocking. Over 65% of participants administered the highest level of shock, despite their visible distress. Many participants were visibly shaken, sweating, and trembling as they continued to follow orders. Milgram's experiment revealed the unsettling power of authority figures to influence behavior, even against moral convictions. It showed how ordinary people could be compelled to act against their own ethical beliefs. It showed that under certain circumstances, ordinary people are capable of inflicting pain simply because they are told to do so. The implications of this finding were profound and disturbing. This experiment sparked intense ethical debates about the psychological stress on participants. Critics argued that the emotional toll on the teachers was too high, raising questions about the ethics of such experiments. The Milgram experiment remains a cornerstone of social psychology, a chilling reminder of the fragility of our moral convictions in the face of authority. It continues to be studied and discussed, shedding light on the complexities of human behavior and obedience. The Little Albert Experiment Fabricating Fear In 1920, John B. Watson and Rosalie Rayner conducted an experiment at Johns Hopkins University that altered our understanding of fear. Their subject, an 11-month-old infant known only as Little Albert. Watson believed that human emotions were learned responses to environmental stimuli. To test this, he instilled fear in Little Albert, who had no fear of furry animals, including a white rat. The experiment involved pairing the presentation of the white rat with a loud, startling noise. This pairing resulted in Albert developing a conditioned fear response to the rat. After several pairings, little Albert began to cry at the mere sight of the white rat, even without the noise. This conditioned fear generalized to other furry objects, demonstrating the power of classical conditioning. While groundbreaking, the experiment raised serious ethical concerns about inducing fear in a vulnerable infant. The Human Radiation Experiments, A Betrayal of Trust During the Cold War, the U.S. government conducted a series of human radiation experiments from the 1940s to the 1960s. These experiments, often conducted on vulnerable populations without their knowledge or consent, exposed individuals to dangerous levels of radiation. Researchers conducted experiments on pregnant women, cancer patients, children, and prisoners. These experiments involved injecting radioactive materials, exposing individuals to radiation therapy, and feeding them radioactive food. One egregious example is the plutonium files, documenting experiments on unsuspecting patients. These patients were injected with plutonium without their knowledge or consent. The experiments remained hidden until the 1990s, when government documents revealed the truth. The public outcry led to congressional hearings and an apology from President Bill Clinton in 1994. The legacy of these experiments serves as a reminder of the dangers of unchecked scientific ambition and the importance of ethical oversight. The Russian Sleep Experiment, A Descent into Madness? Our final stop takes us to the realm of internet lore, where truth and fiction blur in the tale of the Russian Sleep Experiment. This story has captivated the imaginations of many, becoming a staple in the world of creepy pastas and online horror forums. While its authenticity remains unverified, the story serves as a cautionary tale about the potential consequences of pushing human endurance. It raises questions about the ethical boundaries of scientific research and the lengths to which humanity might go in the name of progress. The story goes that in the 1940s, Soviet researchers conducted a top-secret experiment to test the effects of prolonged sleep deprivation. These researchers were driven by a desire to understand the limits of human endurance and the potential military applications of such knowledge. Five political prisoners were sealed inside a chamber, promised freedom if they could stay awake for 30 days. This promise of freedom was a cruel twist, adding a layer of psychological torment to the already grueling physical challenge. The researchers pumped the chamber with an experimental stimulant gas, designed to keep the subjects awake and alert. This gas was untested and its effects on the human body were unknown. As the days wore on, the subjects' behavior became increasingly erratic. They began to exhibit signs of severe psychological distress, including paranoia and extreme agitation. They descended into paranoia, hallucinations, and self-mutilation. The mental and physical toll of the experiment was evident, 
as the subject's grip on reality began to slip away. After 15 days, the researchers decided to terminate the experiment. The situation had spiraled out of control, and the researchers were unprepared for the horrors they had unleashed. When they opened the chamber, they were met with a scene of unimaginable horror. The subjects were barely recognizable, having inflicted severe injuries upon themselves and each other. While likely fiction, the story taps into our fears about the fragility of the human psyche and the dangers of unchecked scientific ambition. It serves as a grim reminder of the potential consequences when ethical boundaries are crossed in the pursuit of knowledge. The Moral Compass of Science Thanks for watching. If you found these stories intriguing, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more insights into the world of science. From simulated prisons to electroshock experiments, from conditioned fear in infants to the horrors of radiation exposure, we've journeyed through some of the most ethically controversial experiments in history. These stories remind us of the responsibility that comes with scientific inquiry, to balance the pursuit of knowledge with the well-being of our fellow human beings. As we continue to unlock the mysteries of the universe, let us do so with a strong moral compass, ensuring that the pursuit of knowledge never comes at the cost of human dignity and compassion.